Hey guys and welcome back to Alphabet Zoo. So in today's video we're building this giant anteater habitat that you can see here. Um, it's a South American theme which is why it's got all the kind of the ruins and it, it kind of blends in with sort of the gharial theme next door so this is kind of like a combined habitat because you have to walk through the anteater habitat to get to the viewing areas for the gharial. So I've also added a, a viewing area for the anteater in this, as well as this little platform area that the anteaters can go up and sleep in so they can get away from the people. Right, so obviously we had the path coming through from the gharial habitat, as I mentioned a minute ago. I wanted to kind of have the, the guest gate at one end and then another guest gate at the, the other end to stop the anteaters going into this kind of underground area because obviously guests can go through the anteaters habitat so i wanted to kind of utilize that i thought that was going to be a really cool kind of mechanic that i could just add to this so yeah um i just put in some rocks just to kind of blend it all in i wanted it to you know to look completely flush and intentional and that you know this kind of goes into this underground cave area um i had to faff around with the paths under here um i used tunneling quite a lot underground um just to get this kind of nice smooth area that you can then build in so here i tunneled and then i removed the bit that i just built and then kind of took tunneling off and smoothed it around to get this kind of nice circular viewing area so with this habitat here i wanted to have uh, the underground viewing area as well as like being able to walk through the habitat so you can you can view the anteaters from basically various angles and feel like you're in the habitat with them so Obviously when you're doing this, always have the terrain higher than the path around. And then with this I had to lower the fence so I could bring the terrain around it. And then I just cover it like that and then just basically tunnel out the bit I want. So then I bring the fence up and then that's it. That's kind of the end of viewing area kind of sorted. And that's how you do like You can do it with like water, you can do it with caves. It's dead straightforward. So here we go, you can watch me have some fun with some rocks now. Um, I seem to do a lot of rock work in this game. I mean, I feel like the more rocks you place, the more like better things look, the more realistic things look, because I mean, rocks are just a natural part of the environment. So I wanted this platform to be accessed by the anteaters, which is why I was smoothing that round like that. Um, and then I was just trying to, you know, fill in all the gaps, make it a, sort of an enclosure now. I don't want to sort of put in the main pieces that I was going to be building the habitat around and building, putting in the main terrain. I then just sort of pad out the rest of it, fill it, like create the rest of the habitat effectively with the null barriers. And then from there, start building it. Now, obviously this is a, a ruins kind of theme habitat that we've got going on. I've used a lot of the South American pack pieces and obviously anteaters are from South America. So I've used a lot of South American sort of tropical um, plants. So yeah, with this, this is just, Again, like the, the structure of the building, I started placing this, I think, right, we're gonna have this little platform area up here. And then once you start putting in the main pieces, you then need to start thinking structurally. So for example, these pieces of the building are still standing. So they're gonna be supported by something. So these are being supported by these beams. This is the little platform I wanted to have, like the little balcony so that the anteaters could go on along here. Obviously one of the cool bits about this game is that the animals will just interact with whatever you build. So for this, um, I was just, again, trying to make the the pillars sort of look like they'd fallen apart and at the top. And perhaps maybe there was more above this at one point, but not anymore. And I had to pull them out just to make it so that the anteaters could access it because obviously it was a bit too narrow. So again, more pillars, making them look really big and tall, making this building look like it was once a massive building. And now it's just, you know, a dilapidated ruin. Nature has just taken over it. Nature has just destroyed it. Remember with this, like if you're building ruins, don't try to build things too neat as well. They don't have to be perfectly straight. They don't have to be perfectly aligned because effectively that's what ruins are. But often I find that, you know, if you want to sell the ruin with these, like particularly with these pillars, when you've got the broken bit of pillar, you can just pop that on the top and it, it kind of like just adds and sells that this is a ruin. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to sell a story here. You're trying to sell a story to the guests who visit the park. Now, obviously one of the things you can do if you're like me and too lazy, um, or if you're not very good at building buildings, you can copy and paste bits from the prefabs. Now, obviously dilapidated buildings are gonna just be buildings with bits missing off them. So if you just copy and paste like a random selection, you could just then create create this kind of feeling that this building's already kind of broken and falling apart because like it's missing like structural, structural bits or just the little details that makes these kind of prefab buildings look so cool. So yeah, I did it twice here just to kind of create this kind of feeling that this building is falling apart. Now, um, obviously perhaps it was a temple at one point, perhaps it was a castle, who knows? It could just be uh, just an old ruin, just an old, old building that's been there for so long, nobody knows what it is. 
Um, and that, that's, that's the story I'm trying to tell here. So um, often with like ruins, you get like very large pieces that are just falling off. So for example here, that those tiles, like, I mean, I've been to Chichen Itza in Mexico and the actual, like those tiles, those Mayan tiles are massive. They're like bigger than you and they just fall off and you're gonna get them lying around um, because you know the the grouting has fallen apart because they, they've been there for so long. Um, obviously, you're gonna get pillars like this. Pillars are just gonna be knocked down. They're like they're gonna just be a, a fallen over. So they might be broken, but also I think one of the things that does sell sort of like collapsed buildings is having very large pieces of rubble. Um, I mean, the game obviously does provide some rubble, but I think if you want to improve how ruins look, you want to be adding like pillars that are just sort of at a weird angle, like they've fallen so far and they're sort of the weight of them is like holding them up but also like they've not broken if you get what i mean like they're still intact these are very strong pieces of stones at the end of the day so if you have very big pieces i think you can just really sell that kind of ruin effect a lot more um so yeah here we have uh, the forage and we are starting to actually build this now for the anteaters so i just lowered a very large piece and then i wanted to create this very higgledy piggledy kind of barrier around this to try and this is something that probably the zoos put in to try and blend in with the rest of the habitat um some more ruin pieces again these are just the generic ruin pieces though they're brilliant like i didn't know how much i needed them until like i got the south american pack and they're just really awesome you can just create you've got like lots of loose bricks and things i mean a lot of the prefab buildings actually are built with individual bricks so the devs really went to town on building these buildings they built them literally with individual bricks so when you copy and paste you can like copy individual bricks and things and just sort of move them over um and put them in the positions you want so yeah so now that, now that we've done like the hardscape we're doing the softscape with the plants now so obviously again like this is why i moved this brick because the, the plants are going to be moving like the walls out the walls are not going to be straight the weight of the plants is going to be forcing the walls into different like positions and things and again there's going to be a lot of these big tiles these are ornamental tiles they're only stuck on with a bit of grounding and so when you actually when like they decay over time they're going to be just all over the floor so yeah doing all the plants making sure that we've got all the roots in and again if you really want to sell this you've got to go to town with the details so with the roots um from the south american pack update that came with the game um you can effectively use all the tiny tiny roots to kind of give this a feel that all these little roots are kind of pushing their way through and again here i wanted to make it feel like this log had just like crashed through this building and just destroyed a lot of it that's why like it's all kind of all over the place it's because this log has just like come through the building it's slid through the back maybe and destroyed a load of it and again like as you can see with the roots and putting in small roots and big roots and just just again going to town with the roots making it feel like nature is taking over this i mean you've got to think about well nature is going to be growing through the cracks it's going to be growing through all the little like all the tiles it's going to be going through all those all these little bricks and things you want to be making sure that you, that's where your nature is going through so like on this corner here for example and like here up, up here where it's just nature's just these have just fallen down and that they've been growing in the cracks where dirt's been accumulating in the cracks and now it's growing up i mean if you actually look at pictures of chichen itza before um they restored it and other sort of like um mayan all the other mayan buildings they have there like you can see how like how much restoration work they've done that like, you don't really appreciate it like they were working i think for 12 hour days for like a year or something to try and restore these buildings and restore all these projects and there's all these ruins that are still in the jungles of um like mexico and sort of like in the cancun area and they're still there but you've got to they've got to actually excavate them like they're in the jungle and it's not very easy to get to they've got to chop down the trees and excavate these ruins so um you know it's a lot of work going into restoring buildings and restoring ruins and things like that so you know um for example perhaps the zoo didn't have all the time and effort so they decided well we'll incorporate some of this into the habitat we, you know we'll keep this in so again like it's a lot to sort of consider when you're sort of building ruins i mean obviously have a look at sources online and you know you you'll be able to get like um a feel for kind of what sort of the buildings look like i mean at the end of the day the ruins that we often see in this day and age are literally just like a couple of pieces of the wall um back to doing some rock work again anyway now so this is just finishing off the sort of the indoor viewing area um 
I love the South American benches. I love the fact that it looks like an anteater. It just fits this habitat so well. And again, these air plants are gorgeous. I love just throwing them in everywhere. Like I put them in all over my zoo because it just looks realistic and they're just really cool. So obviously this is the area that again, the, the zoo itself has sort of designed. So it's all gonna be quite neat and clinical compared to kind of outside. But again, we're trying to sell the, the fact that there's all these trees above this, that are, the roots are gonna be digging their way through the soil. So, and again, just, you want to be having this kind of like root system coming through if you're having like an underground cave thing because you know roots do grow straight down and they grow through the rocks and they push the rocks out of the way so yeah just putting in some uh the viewing boards and things like that but i was really happy with how this turned out to be honest um considering again i was just sort of winging it um often with the ruins you can kind of make things look maybe a little bit too simple or not like it's a building <laughs> if you get what i mean so um, sometimes just going into the, the little details really, really helps improve this. Um, so for example, I'm gonna be putting in these pillars that just help sell that this has actually been built into the structure. So it, it does make a difference. Like you can, you can sort of feel the difference that this is actually now part of the building. This is part of this temple. Perhaps where the guest of viewing was at one point part of the temple that's just been lost to the sort of the erosion and the soil creep and all just the rocks and everything in the nature it's just been lost to it so they've excavated this out and found that there was like a chamber under here i mean for example the mines um in chichen itza like in the rainforest there was no sort of real water source they relied heavily on the underground rivers i believe that recently they found that underneath chichen itza there is like an underground river which was probably where they were getting their uh, water from so yeah it's just you know the finishing touches now just um trying to make it all look good and putting in these uh, exhibits. There's a lot of exhibits for the letter G, so I've been putting them all in now. And yeah, that, that's just, this is sort of the finished product now, really. Um, so I will probably leave you now with the cinematic so you can watch our anteaters running around this lovely ruined habitat and get a good feel for what it actually feels like if you're a guest. So take care guys, and I will see you in the next video.